Hello, my name is Daniel Rodik and I work as an expert associate at Society for Sustainable Development Design, or Shorter Door. Welcome to the second lecture in Module 4, Sustainable Architecture and Energy Management. Today I will give a lecture on renewable energy systems in buildings as a part of solution for sustainable conversion. In practice, sustain sustainability is defined and implemented having in mind three pillars, as you may have heard many times – economy, environment and society. In this module we are focusing on how to reduce environmental impact of the building using the proper technologies. Here is the content of the lecture. First, you will hear something about the renewable energy sources in general. Then I will introduce most appropriate types of renewable energy sources for the urban building applications. They will be divided in technologies for the production of electricity and for the production of thermal energy or heat from renewable energy sources. And finally, I will give some short layout of current trends and scenarios. Common definition of renewable energy sources is they are energy sources renewed on a human scale. Compared to fossil fuels as energy sources, emissions of pollutants during the production process is zero or very low. This is particularly important for greenhouse gas CO2. Accumulated CO2 in the atmosphere causes irreversible climate changes we are facing today. Biomass is also a renewable resource, because the energy source is renewed quite fast with newly grown trees and plants. But we have to stress that burning of a biomass causes emission of additional greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, although this CO2 is considered neutral since it would circulate anyway in the carbon cycle of biomass decay and photosynthesis. However, not all renewable technologies are sustainable. It is important to distinguish renewable and sustainable systems and technologies. Sustainable energy systems or technologies are one that have lowest environmental impact and positive social and economic impact. For example, a large hydropower plant endangering biodiversity and human settlements is still classified as renewable, but certainly not sustainable. Small hydropower plant up to 10 MW, which is not harmful to the local community or ecosystem, is sustainable energy source. And now Let's take a look at the past. We see that until the 19th century and the Industrial Revolution, only renewable energy was used. But sometimes, like forest depletion in England, it was not sustainable at all. Burning the wood for fire was the first known form of energy used and still traditional biomass represents large share of the world energy use. Animal power was also broadly used for transportation until the 20th century. On the pictures, you can see direct use of solar power for space heating, first passive houses built by North American natives. Solar power was used for water heating and food drying. Wind power was the main energy source for the sea transportation and food production by windmills. You can see Panemone windmills in ancient Persia. Fossil fuels were used only occasionally, burning the oil and coal for the purposes mentioned before. And then, in mid-19th century, exponential and widespread use of fossil fuels started 
and led to rapid industrial revolution. Inventions of steam turbine and internal combustion engines enable transformation of fossil fuels to electricity, heat and motion. Transport. Electric bulb made possible the prolongation of working hours, transforming the electricity to light. Nuclear power, used for a production of electricity and heat, emerged after the Second World War and potentiated the economies with abundance of inexpensive energy. This relatively short historical period of fossil fuels that still lasts today led to the first energy crisis in 1970s, alarming the humanity about the depletion of fossil resources, and at the same time early environmental movement warned about the negative effects of nuclear and fossil fuels. This was the start signal for the global renewable energy revolution. I will start the overview of renewable energy technologies with wind power used for the production of electricity. A wind turbine produces power by converting the force of the wind, which is a kinetic energy acting on the rotor blades, into rotational energy and into torque, which is turning force or mechanical energy. It is quite simple. So, where the wind comes from? Simplified. Moving of the air in the atmosphere is caused by differences in temperatures, caused by solar radiation. So wind is basically just one form of transformed solar power. According to estimations from meteorologists, about 1% of the incoming solar radiation is converted into wind energy, while the 1% of the daily wind energy input is nearly equivalent to the present world daily energy consumption. Although this sounds promising, it is not so easy to catch and store wind energy. Two types of turbines are used in modern applications, vertical and horizontal, defined by position of the axis of the turbine. The latter ones are most common wind turbines installed. On the picture, picture there is a wind power plant with horizontal turbines in Tokoda Kazauria in Italy. I will give some keynotes on production of electricity from wind power. First, wind turbine efficiency depends on wind airflow, generator and other parts of the system. 16 over 27, or 29.3%, is the number that describes the theoretical maximum of the wind power, or airflow, a wind turbine can extract due to its construction. In reality, it is around 50%. Second, produced energy is intermittent because of the prevailing winds, speed and orientation. This is called variability of the wind. To mitigate intermittency, more wind turbines are required and some sort of storage is needed such as battery, which is often expensive, or more often electric grid. When choosing the location for the wind turbine or turbines, we have to have in mind site conditions such as obstacles in near surrounding, environmental topography, vegetation, land utilization, buildings, and distance between wind turbines. Distance is important because one wind turbine can act as obstacle for the other. Relief of the hills, called orography, is also to be analyzed. For example, low roughness of the Earth's surface diminishes the velocity of the wind. This is the reason the higher the wind turbine is installed, the better. Side factors to count on are access to the electro distribution grid, local road access, local environmental effects, endangered bird or bat species in vicinity, the landscape classification, for example natural parks, protected areas, closeness of local habitation, and the effect of noise. 
Noise is very important when planning a wind turbine in urban area. And also interference in TV and radio signals. So you can see that not all windy locations are suitable for wind power. Wind turbines could harm birds and bats and have serious noise levels. All of this is the reason for local community to be highly involved in preparation phase in order to avoid NIMBY symptom or not in my backyard. And now, a few important remarks on economy of the wind power. Investment in wind power depends mainly on the size, power of the wind power plant. A wind power plant describes a group of wind turbines producing the electricity to be fed into the electric grid. One wind turbine can generate from 100 watt to few megawatt of power. Small wind turbines are usually installed as a single power generator for a direct consumption of electricity at the location. They are used for, for off-grid application in combination with solar photovoltaics for an independent energy system not connected to electric grid. Large wind turbines, such as one on the picture shown below, have few hundred kilowatt power up to few megawatt and they are installed on the windy locations, in the remote areas, and are generating electricity to be fed into the electric grid. Concerning the cost, it could be measured with the leveled cost of electricity, or LCOE. It is an economic assessment of the average total cost to build and operate a power generating asset over its lifetime, divided by the total energy output of the asset over that lifetime. The LCOE can also be regarded as the minimum cost at which electricity must be sold in order to break even over the lifetime of the project. LCOE for wind power in 2014 in Europe was around 10 US dollar cents per kilowatt hour. Another important energy indicator is ROI. It is a dimensionless value, a ratio between energy return on energy invested. A ROI ratio of 20 means typical wind power plant in its lifespan produces 20 times more energy than it was invested in the making of the wind power plant. It is embedded energy in materials, energy for transport, assembly, construction site works, decommissioning and so on. Energy ratio less than 1 is considered to be energy technology not contributing to energy balance but depleting resources. In the few next slides I will talk about solar energy. Here you can see examples of solar photovoltaic or solar power. It is a high-end technology. Photovoltaics, or shorter PV systems, convert sunlight directly into electrical energy, using the photovoltaic effect. The amount of energy that can be produced is directly dependent on the solar intensity. Thus, for example, PV devices are capable of producing electricity even in winter and even during cloudy weather, albeit at a reduced rate. The efficiency of the PV modules produced today is around 20%. PV modules could be an integral part of the building with another function, shading, roof or facade, as you can see on the pictures. PV systems could also be called on-grid and off-grid, depending on connection to the electro distribution grid. Photovoltaics, or shorter PVs, are suitable for urban application because of low visual and noise impact considered to wind power or any other energy generating facility. Still, they have some site specifics. Large area per installed power is needed. Clear south orientation without obstacles. Flat roofs of the residential buildings are ideal sites. 
In order to catch the maximum of the solar radiation, surface should always face the sun following the daily and annual sun path changes. Most of the PV systems are fixed with optimal tilt or angle of inclination from the horizontal plane and oriented to south. From the economy point of view, the level cost of electricity is higher than wind, therefore incentives for, from the state are needed. Most EU countries are offering state incentives for electricity from PV, such as feed-in tariff, as an increased purchase price of electricity in order to balance the gap between production price from PVs and market price of electricity. Net metering is a possibility to balance its consumption with the local PV power plant, for example on the building. Environmental aspect of the PV is arguable. ROE is less than ROE of wind power, varying from 0.8 to 10, depending on the research source. By latest research, total energy consumption in production, integration in the grid and labor is around 2600 kilowatt hour per square meter. Please check out the PVGIS online tool shown right above. A useful GIS-based online calculator to access solar resource, calculate radiation and electricity production. And now you will see how solar energy could be used for the production of heat. As opposed to photovoltaics, which are transforming sunlight into energy, solar thermal systems collect the direct solar radiation to be used as a heat for space and water heating. Also, solar thermal applications could be used for direct food drying, evaporation and cooling. On the picture is Braia County Emergency Hospital in Romania. On the left side you can see solar collectors, vacuum tubes, and on the right pumps, valves and hot water reservoir. Basic principle of the solar thermal system is to capture the more as possible solar radiation and to conserve the heat. Solar collectors are placed on the roof or any other surface exposed to sun without shading or other obstacles. The orientation is the same as for the PVs. They look similar too, but collectors are consisting of pipe network attached to flat plate called absorber. The heat collected is transported via pipes filled with liquid and stored into the tank. Storage of the heat is insulated water tank. Stored heat water is therefore possible to use later, when the sun is not shining and heat is needed. Backup is also needed because of annual intermittency, as shown on the graph below right. Dimensions of the system, volume of the tank and surface of the collectors depend on energy consumption. Roughly 1 to 1.5 square meter of solar collector is installed per apartment. And if space heating is used, then more, around 10 to 30 square meters. Solar thermal systems type could be active and passive. Active are using the pump to circulate the media, which transports the heat from collector to the water tank. Passive ones use thermal siphon effect or natural circulation, rising of warmer water to the tank and colder water back to the collector without any pump. In schematic display, there are shown various system types for residential buildings. Main differences are in water storage and backup heater placement and size.
Production of thermal and electric energy could be obtained from biomass. Biomass is organic matter derived from living or recently living organisms. Biomass can be used as a source of energy and it most often refers to plants or plant-based materials which are not used for food or feed. They are specifically called lignocellulosic biomass. Most common use of the biomass is for space and hot water heating, but liquid forms could be used in transport such as biodiesel and bioethanol. Biogas is produced in the anaerobic process, the composition of organic matter without oxygen, and could be used for the same purposes as natural gas or liquid petroleum gas (LPG). The biomass for the heating purposes is being burned in a combustion furnace, similar to oil or gas furnace, and produces heat to be used in the building. On the picture, there is a biomass boiler burning with pellets for the space and domestic water heating in primary school Budasho in Sisak, Croatia. Here you can see some forms of biomass, like pellets, wood chips, sawdust, straw, solid wood and biodiesel. Another specific type of uh, energy generation with biomass is so-called cogeneration or simultaneous production of heat and electricity in the same process. This kind of systems could be used to feed the local heat network through district heating systems, residential and public buildings, and to generate electricity and feed the electri electric grid. The heat is transported to consumers via heat pipes and electricity is supplying the electrodistribution grid. Heating grid, or loop, could be used for other energy sources such as geothermal. On the picture, there is a schematic example of local energy grid with three energy forms. Hydropower, combined heat and power biomass power plant, and geothermal power plant are producing electricity and supplying the power grid. The latter two, biomass and geothermal, are also producing heat for our local heat purposes. And last, biogas facility is producing gas for the gas network and as a fuel for the combined heat and power. Combined or cogeneration process is much more efficient because the waste heat is not released but used. In the previous slide, I have mentioned another way how to produce or transform thermal energy from renewable source, and it is using the geothermal energy. It is a thermal energy generated and stored in the Earth. Earth's internal heat is thermal energy generated from radioactive decay and continual heat loss from Earth's formation. The Earth's geothermal resources are theoretically more than adequate to supply humanity's energy needs, but only a very small fraction can be profitably exploited. Here you can see heat pumps using the water from the well located nearby the building on the right. The main principle of the heat pump could be described as opposite of a common household refrigerator or air con conditioner for cooling and heating. Heat pumps are designed to move thermal energy opposite to the direction of spontaneous heat flow by absorbing heat from a cold space and releasing it to a warmer one. Refrigerator is using the air as a media and in the same manner it provides heat energy from a source of heat to a destination called a heat sink. A heat pump uses some amount of external power to accomplish the work of transferring energy from
from the heat source to the heat sink. A common source of sink for heat in smaller installations is the outside air, as used by an air source heat pump. Geothermal heat pumps or ground source heat pumps use shallow underground heat exchangers as a heat source or sink and water as the heat transport medium. Many applications of renewable energy technologies are suitable for urban buildings, but primarily solar energy, PVs and thermal collectors, biomass, small combined heat and power plants, and geothermal energy. Due to smaller power of the single plant, renewables are often more decentralized, meaning instead of one or few centralized large sources, we are introducing many smaller energy sources. Photovoltaic power plants are best examples of decentralized energy, where pre consumer of electricity, occupying a house or a building, could be small producer in the same time. The term prosumer describes this new entity and normally refers to households, cooperatives or local enterprises that are producers and consumers of energy in one. Beside technical solutions, new or old ownership models are also introduced. Community ownership is mostly connected to the term energy cooperative. It is a legal person, a company producing the electricity from renewable energy source, but the company is owned or co-owned by its beneficiaries, private persons in the local community where the wind power or PV is located. They have the power to decide where the plant will be built, how large, and what to do with the revenue, usually invested in the local community and that way contributing to local economy rather than making profit for multinational companies. This model is very effective in diminishing the NIMBY effects. Since the local inhabitants are taking care of their own power plant. There is a technical challenge for introduction of decentralized sources since current network infrastructure is not built to allow for many distributed feed-in points. And typically, even if some feed-in is allowed at the local distribution level, the transmission level infrastructure cannot accommodate it. On the picture above, you can see that decentralized networks have different hierarchy and design. Most common term for operation of such network is smart grid. A smart grid is an electrical grid which includes a variety of operational and energy measures, including smart meters, smart appliances, renewable energy resources, and energy efficiency resources. The improved flexibility of the smart grid permits greater penetration of highly variable renewable energy sources, such as solar power and wind power, even with the addition of energy storage. With this picture, I will finish my presentation. In the following slide, you can find links for further research and links to some of the examples previously shown. Thank you for listening and goodbye.